Hello, everyone. Welcome. Bonjour à tous. Um, as you may have noticed already, um, Argo City is not an opinionated project. Um, what I mean by that is that it doesn't dictate how you use the tool. You can do things like using the generated manifest, like it was mentioned yesterday at ArgoCon in different talks, or you can do something a little bit more esoteric, like using Nix to generate your manifest and hook that up in Argo CD during runtime. Those are use cases that are available, and it's up to you to decide how to use it, how to use it too. This talk is about those use cases where you want to generate manifests in a specific way that is uh, specific to your company. Let me quickly introduce myself. My name is uh, Leonardo. I usually go by Leo. I'm a staff uh, software developer at Intuit, and I am a Argo CD and Argo rollouts maintainer. All right. uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Alexander Matyushensev. I prefer to go by Alex. And uh, <clears throat> I'm a long-time maintainer of Argo project. I started working on it from day one. And currently, I'm a chief architect and co-founder of uh, Acuity, a company that tries to make Argo even better. And um, I'm going to start the presentation. So this is the plan and agenda for today's talk. So as Leo mentioned, we are going to talk about uh, config management. And first, I will describe what does it mean, what do we mean by saying config management tools in Argo CD. Next, I will jump into the feature that we're going to uh, describe in details today. It's config management plugins, or CMP for shortness. So I will describe first iteration, second iteration, and then I will do a demo where I will try to teach you how to create your own config management plugin. And then I will uh, give it back to Leo, and he will do a deep dive and describe security enhancements, high-level architecture of a feature, some challenges, and improvements that are coming uh, soon. And with that, let's go ahead and start the presentation. So uh, as I mentioned, I want to give a brief overview of what config management tools means in Argo CD. And uh, so from day one, I'm sorry, I have to stay away from my mic. Uh, from day one, we decided that Argo CD is not going to force engineers to store YAML files in Git repositories obviously because it requires a lot of repetition. No developers want to do it, and everyone prefers to use tools like Helm or Customize to generate YAML on the fly. And so uh, as a maintainer, we realized it's a huge requirement, and so we decided to introduce first-class support of those tools in Argo CD itself. And first-class support means uh, those tools are baked into Argo CD image and available with no configuration out of the box. And the uh, next big decision we've made is Argo CD is going to be smart about those tools, which means it will decide automatically with no input from a, from a user which tool is supposed to be used for manifest generation. And uh, to describe it even simpler, so if Argo CD sees char.yaml file in the Git directory, it uses Helm. If it's customization, it uses customize, and so on. And so. Uh, and then after some few iterations, we decided to go even one step ahead and Argo CD got a user interface support and CLI support. And I'm kind of trying to show it on the screen right now. So Argo CD allows end user to interact with uh, the config management tool and quickly change, influence the manifest generation through parameters. And so in this particular example, developer can override image tags uh, on the fly using customize, and that enables use cases such as dynamically generate applications for pull requests and provide so-called preview applications, or simply modify your QA environment to test the changes that you want to test and without committing code to Git. And so uh, looking back, I can say uh, it was a really great decision to support those tools out of the box. It really helped with adoption, but after a year or two, we learn about some disadvantages. And uh, the list of problems is on the screen right now. Uh, the first biggest issue was uh, our opinion about the most popular tools, not necessarily much as with everyone else's opinion. So one mistake we learned very quickly is 
For example, Kinsonet, the very first tool, by the way, that was supported by Argo CD, it just died a year after release of Argo CD. So obviously not the most popular tool anymore. And uh, on top of that, we've got a lot of requests to support more tools, such as Tanka, Helmfy, CDK, and those tools are very obviously great tools and deserves to be supported. However, we learn our lesson from <coughs> supporting Kesonet, and then we realized that it's a lot of maintenance burden to support a new tool in Argo CD. Um, and so finally, uh, we've got a lot of complaints from end users, developers, that Argo CD release cycle not necessary matches with the release cycle of all those tools. And so the caveat is, let's say Helm release a new awesome feature that's available for you today, but if you want to use it in Argo CD, you have to wait for the next Argo CD release, which is probably happening two months in the future, which is obviously not, not optimal. And so uh, it was clear that a change is required, and that's why we come up with an improvement. And the improvement was a new functionality called Config Management Plugins, or CMP. And uh, this, is, this slide represents the first iteration of this feature. And uh, to quickly describe it, uh, the main feature that it provides is ability to take the CLI that you want to use for manifest generation, and then just dynamically configure it in Argo CD. And so as an administrator, you would have to provide pretty much two pieces of information. First, the name of this tool, and second, just the CLI command that invoke the binary of your tool and produce JSON or YAML. And this way, you can pretty much take anything and convert it into a config management tool in Argo CD. And uh, we even supported limited uh, version of parameters. So end user have ability to provide a list of environment variables that will be passed to uh, the environment while executing the shell command to generate manifests. And so um, the result was pretty good. We, the YAML snippet that you are seeing right now, it's the real-time snippet that a lot of people used in production. It allows to take Helm and customize and combine it into one tool, customized Helm. So Helm will produce a manifest from a Helm chart and customize, provide uh, some patches on top. And as usual, uh, we solved like 80% of use cases and didn't solve remaining 20% that required a lot of work. Here is a list of things that we didn't do well or just didn't plan even to solving on solving. So first of all, parameter support was not ideal. Like end users had to know the list of environment variable names with no suggestion from user interface which environment variables even make sense. Uh, second, uh, we did not implement auto detection. So let's say if you have a plugin that's meant for Helm, Helm file, and if you point Argo CD to a directory which has a Helm file configuration, Argo CD would not know what to do, and end user would have to explicitly specify it in application spec, which is not ideal, again, not the perfect user experience. And uh, finally, administrators, Argo CD administrators, we were not super happy because we did not really provide any help for them to deliver binaries, and they had to do tricks that you see on the screen right now. The YAML snippet uh, on the right side of the screen shows a patch that they need to apply to a particular Argo CD component and use tricks like init containers to download binaries on the fly and then volume mount copy it into the main container, which is <clears throat> not ideal. And so finally we're getting to a feature that I'm going to demonstrate soon. Uh, config management plugins v2. So um, we kind of worked on, on the feedback of a first iteration and implemented the new version of config management plugins functionality. It had some, it basically had a, it, it's like a complete rewrite, so it had breaking changes, but it provided a set of improvements. So the biggest improvement was uh, ability to automatically detect uh, the tool that's supposed to be used for generation which means if you, yeah, for the Helm file, that as you will see soon, you can literally configure it once in the centralized managed configuration and then Argo CD is going to know that the plugin is supposed to be used to generate 
to use Helm file for Helm file based application manifest generation. Next big improvement was parameter support. So pretty much as a developer of a config management plugin, you can provide first class like experience in Argo CD UI. So Argo CD is going to know which parameters you can possibly provide to this application and default values of those applications, which is a big improvement. And uh, finally, we improved security and Leo will cover the security improvements in details uh, once I'm done. And so that's enough of theory. Now I'm going to, I will try to do a demo with those microphone issues and show you how that feature works in, in real life. Uh, so for this demo, I created a Git repository. So you can just basically repeat your demo, repeat the same demo on your laptop. The only requirement is you need to have some kind of Kubernetes cluster, Minikube, K3S, whatever works for you. So now I'm going to switch off the presentation and jump into the Git repository. Let me make screen a little bigger. And so uh, basically the Git repository has all the information you need to, to try the demo yourself. It's going to teach us how to use CMP v2 and create a plugin that enables Helm file uh, as a manifest generation tool in Argo CD. In case you don't know, here is the link to the Helm file home directory. A short summary, it's the CLI tool built on top of Helm that adds a lot of awesome features. It uh, simplifies secret management, environment variables usage and more. So I encourage you to try it. I, I really like it and use it. And um, next, I want to switch to content of this repo. Just briefly explain what, it, what do we have here. And we literally have three files in addition to readme. Uh, the most boring file is customization.yaml. I hope you know what customize is, but basically it's the tool that brings together a bunch of YAML files. And so first thing I'm doing here, I just take uh, open source Argo CD manifests that install plain Argo CD with no modifications. And then next, we slightly modify it by applying a patch to Argo CD repo server, the component that's responsible for manifest generation. And next, I want to show you the changes that patch applies. And so as a short summary, it introduces a sidecar container that represents our plugin. So the name of plugin is a Helm file because it supports Helm file usage in Argo CD. And the main difference of the first version comparing to second is that here you're able to use any image that has binaries of your, of your tool. And so you are no longer limited to Argo CD image. You can use your own image here. And so for this demo, I'm using community maintained image uh, that supports integration between Argo CD and Helm. And then next, uh, I have volume mounts that just must be there for every uh, config management plugin. So you can find those volume mounts in documentation or just copy it from this demo. And last bit is I need to provide a YAML file that has configuration detail of a plugin. And in this case, I'm using just a config map, customized config map generator and a config map volume mount. So basically the content of this, the file that will be delivered using volume mount is defined here in the plugin.yaml file. And it explains to Argo CD first how to generate manifests. So I just selected two commands, init command, behind the scene, download Helm chart dependencies and generate command, eventually execute Helm template to produce a YAML output into standard out. Next, more interesting part is, this is a part of configuration that explains Argo CD how to detect that application in the Git is managed by Helm file. So, and as you can guess, it looks at the content of the Git, uh, Git folder in the Git repository, and if it sees Helm file.yaml, it's going to use this particular plugin. And last bit, the most complex one that you can learn in Argo CD documentation, it's parameter detection. So basically it's a shell command that produces a JSON list of 
elements where each element is a parameter that has a name, type, and default value. And that's pretty much it. So we have this Git repository and it's ready to be used. To use it, just execute this YAML snippet, which will create a namespace and then uh, apply the manifest generated by this repo. It will install Argo CD, configure it to use the plugin. And so for the sake of time, I did it before the demo. So now I just have an Argo CD running locally. I can open it. It's running on my local host. And as you can see, it basically has no applications. And sorry, let me open it again. I had just a bookmark that creates an application using a Helm file. So I hope you are familiar with Argo CD user interface, but long story short, it creates an application based on content of this repository, Helm file. I'm using it because it's, uh, it has the examples that I need to use and I'm going to use it for the demo. And the first enhancement I want to demonstrate is detection. So as you can see, Argo CD inspected the content of this repo and it had detected all the Helm, uh, Helm file based applications. So as an end user, I don't have to guess like what my path is. So it's, it's a nice convenience. I'm going to use this uh, sample deployment based on Helm file. And next improvement is, as you can see, Argo CD knows that it's based on a plugin and it detected all the parameters that as an end user, I can specify and uh, kind of influence how manifests are being generated. So I'm very happy it worked. Basically demo already successful, but just to finish it, I need to finally create application. It will take a few seconds. And as you can see, application was created. If you are familiar with Argo CD, then great, you already know what happened. If not, then basically Argo CD knows that this directory has two Kubernetes resources. One of them is deployment and it's supposed to be deployed to, you know, to namespace that I chose. And that's it. So pretty much you have enough of information to create your own plugin. It can be a Helm file or whatever tool you like, like Tanka. And now I want to pass it back to Rio so he can explain what happened, you know, in background and how it, how it works. Rio, please continue. Okay. Thank you, Alex, for the demo. And I want to start this section of the presentation just opening um, a really short parenthesis, just to say that by the time the Argo City project was about to be graduated by CNCF, <clears throat> one of the prerequisites uh, that was brought to us is that we had to uh, step up in our security posture. At that point in time, um, we were having CVEs happening and being presented to us on a weekly basis, sometimes even three CVs at a week. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, CMP was one of the main targets. CMP V1 and even V2, uh, when it first came out, was um, yeah one of the, the, the main targets of those uh, CVEs. Uh, and at the end, we, 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 uh, we got graduated. Um, but if you, if you if you analyze all the issues that we faced, uh, it boils down to those two main uh, categories that I'm showing you here. Um, and, it, and it has to do with the, the fact that um, the CMP process was running in the same process as the repo server. And they were sharing the Git environment. So with that, we could have some really bad things happening like uh, from a CMP, we could access another Git repository, nothing, nothing, not, not related with the application itself, which is uh, even private repos and sometimes, which is, uh, yeah, pretty bad thing to have. Um, the other problem that we had, the other category that we had um, uh, of issues is the, the possibility to have that directed traversal attacks. So again, uh, the, the, the CMP process was mounting the same volume where the repo server has cloned all repos that it needs, that is configured with that particular Argo CD instance. So uh, from, from a CMP project, uh, a repo server, I could have something like a uh, symbolic link there defined that go one level up and have access to other repos. Maybe we find uh, a secret committed to a repo uh, 
and, well, I'm kidding, nobody commits uh, secrets in Git, right? Um, anyhow, uh, and what is the solution to the problem? Uh, it's quite simple, actually. Uh, we don't need, we can't share the Git environment uh, with the CMP process, and uh, we can't share the file system. Uh, the, the, the challenge here is how we can achieve this, uh, how can we improve this uh, security issue um, avoiding breaking the existing um, CMP, CMP uh, plugins that existed at that point in time, right? Unfortunately for the Git environment, we had no choice. It was just too much power to provide to the CMP process to have. So we had to cut that. It was that, that was a, a conscious uh, decision that we made. Unfortunately, we had to break uh, the compatibility there. Um, but for the file system, we found a solution to the problem. Um, but before jumping on how we address the problem, I want to provide you a brief overview of how CMP works behind the scenes. Okay? So when Alex explained about the sidecar, the CMP v2 that runs in the sidecar, basically that sidecar, what it does is it runs an implementation of this interface here. So this is the interface that repo server uses um, to communicate with CMP uh, plugins. So it's a gRPC interface, and we provide the, the, the default implementation already for CMP developers. So it's a binary that ships. It's, uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's in those uh, uh, config maps and configurations that Alex uh, showed before. But uh, let's say the Argo CD needs uh, to generate manifest. So how, how that works, right, right behind the scenes, how actually Argo City um, generate manifests leveraging uh, a CMP plugin. Uh, and that's how it works. Uh, basically, uh, on this diagram here on uh, your right side, um, I'm, I'm exemplifying uh, an Argo City instance, right? So we have the application controller. Uh, so the, the yellow boxes are um, representing pods. The blue box inside those yellow boxes are containers, okay? So uh, from the application controller pod, we have the controller uh, service running there. And whenever a manifest needs to be generated by Argo CD, um, uh, that is done uh, invoking a gRPC service to the repo server. That, that request goes over uh, HTTP2 and repo server is the component responsible for generating manifests in Argo City. When that request reaches the repo server, if there is a, a config management plugin uh, uh, registered to that repo server, um, the repo server will automatically get notified by that. And that communication also happens over gRPC, but at this time using a Unix socket. So it doesn't go out of the network and we can apply uh, uh, additional security uh, because it's file system based. Um, and if you notice this interface that I mentioned here on the, on the left is, a, aside from this init attribute here, uh, is a one-to-one -one match to the, to, the, to, the, to, the, uh, to the other attributes. So this uh, yellow square that you see here at this part, this represents exactly the config map Alex was showing you, okay? So it's a one-to-one -one match. So basically, repo server will invoke this generate manifest method, and the method will basically just execute whatever the CMP developer defined in the generate attribute of the config map. So that's basically how you define and create new CMPs to attach in Argo City. And I'm representing here that we can have multiple containers, multiple uh, CMP plugins um, running at the same time. Right? Okay, but let's go back to the problem that we're, I was referring to, right? So how, how we address the issue with the shared file system. Uh, as I said, we don't share the same file system anymo anymore. So from the, from the CMP uh, process that runs in, in this container here, there is no uh, notion of the file system running in the repo server container. What we do is when this request reaches the the, the, the repo server service, um, the service will identify the directory that is related to that particular application. It will um, compress that directory in a targz file 
send it over the gRPC to the, to the, to the repo server, process that repo server, automatically uh, extract that file, and just those files are available to the process. So there's no possibility to uh, inspect other files that are belonging to the repo server. Okay, so known issues. We know uh, the current, this is the current state. This is where we are today with CMP. And uh, in the, between the maintainers, we all agree that uh, the, the CMP installation process is, is complex, right? The thing, of, the thing that you have to patch a repo server and add an, an additional sidecar container, maybe there's a better way of doing this, right? And we all agree that there, there must be. Um, it's a little bit hard to debug because it runs as, as, as an additional container. So you have to remember if you, ins if you want to inspect the log to really filter the, log the container that you want. It's a little bit annoying, it's not a super big deal. But the fact is that you have to, to deploy uh, all those components locally in order to develop a test properly, a, a CMP plugin. Um, there is a non-issue, so this, there's a, a, a GitHub issue opened already, and we are aware of that, related to uh, mono repos. So basically, the thing is, uh, if the repo has more than 200 megabytes, um, there, there are situations where users are facing timeouts because this TARGZ process and send, sending it over to the, the other uh, process over gRPC, sometimes it takes longer. There's a way to address this problem, by filtering the files in the Git, so uh, like ex excluding the dot .git folder uh, before compressing it is uh, one alternative. Uh, the feature is there. It was implemented by one contributor. Uh, and uh, yeah, one more issue that we're aware is that um, the CMP as it is today, it doesn't provide you out of the box access to specific features of customizing Helm. And that's why we implemented the parameterization in Argo City, uh, in the CMP um, uh, implementation in Argo City, to allow having those use cases possible. So basically, a CMP developer needs to implement those features in a specific CMP, leveraging those, those parameters. Okay, and uh, where do we wanna go? Uh, and uh, before jumping here, I want to clarify that there's no real ongoing work on those, uh, in any of those uh, uh, topics here. Uh, basically, this, between the maintainers, this is kind of an agreement that where we think um, the CMP should go. So we all agree that uh, we, sh we could have a better installation process, right? A streamlined, not, maybe not only for CMPs, but also for the other extension points that exists in Argo City. So this is something that could be uh, very well improved. Um, the other topic that we would love to see happening, and this is the first direction that we went uh, when we wanted to uh, address the problem with traversal attacks, is doing in the repo server something similar to what Docker does. And what I mean by that is leveraging Linux user namespace. So the idea here, what we try to do, right, was that from the repo server, we wanted to open a new process um, in an in a isolated user namespace that has only the specific directory mounted for that specific application. I ran a POC uh, uh, at that point in time, I called it Limbo, and I got, I got this concept working locally in, in EKS clusters. Uh, unfortunately, Argo CD needs, uh, not unfortunately, but the fact is Argo CD needs to run in uh, Red Hat clusters. So uh, in, that, um, in that environment, we, we, we uh, ran this uh, POC together with our uh, Red Hat friends, uh, contributors to Argo CD. And for this functionality to work, we needed to have a, um, a Linux um, specific capability enabled at the node level, if I remember correctly. And that wasn't the case in OpenShift clusters at that point in time. Maybe that changed, I don't know. But that would be a much uh, better way to address that problem because we wouldn't have to 
you know, uh, compress that file over, send over the RPC to the, to the, to the CMP process, things will be uh, way, way faster and, and still safe. Um, last but not least, one thing I was discussing with Alex yesterday about the timeout issue. Um, maybe there is an easy way to fix that problem. We can't make uh, any promises at this point. We need to make sure that this is not bringing um, uh, the security issues that we, we had to, 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 to fix in the past. Um, but uh, maybe in the next version, we're going to have a solution for that problem. And uh, that's about it. Uh, this QR code here um, will drive you to Linktree. It has uh, links to um, every uh, content presented today by us, and as well as the presentation itself, if you want to have the link to it. Um, it also has a link for, for you to provide uh, feedback to, to us, if you want. And uh, thanks, everybody. We still have five minutes for, for any questions. And I just wanted to add that maybe last slide, consider it a call for action. So a list of improvements kind of were agreed by maintainers. If you're curious about contributing to Argo, this is the awesome list that you won't have to prove that those improvements are necessary because maintainers like really looking forward for, you know, for help to implementing them.